Good morning, my friends. It is a wonderful day. And before we begin our activities and life, let us sit at the feet of Jesus, listening to his word and through his voice. Let him speak to us. And let what he speaks to you this morning be a guidance and a help to you to live your life right. Today's meditation is taken from 2 Kings chapters 22 and 23. From time to time, the church has experienced and witnessed special times of God's moves, which we called revival. Even in the Old Testament, we found times of revival. One such revival happened during the kingship of King Josiah of Judah. This we read, uh, read in uh, 2 Kings chapters 22 and 23. A study of this particular revival uh, will teach us a certain keys to be used for God to move in that special way which we call revival. We find the two important keys that we must use. Number one, a man whose heart is right. Now revival does not happen in a vacuum. Of course it is true, every revival is a sovereign move of God. But however, the history of every revival also shows men and women whom God raised who were willing to pay the price for God to move in a special way, bringing a mighty revival amongst God's people, through whom the cities and nations will be blessed. Let us look into the life of King Josiah, who was instrumental in uh, uh, bringing about a much needed revival uh, in the nation of uh, Judah. And the first thing we notice about his heart is Josiah had a holy heart. In the second Kings chapter 22 verse 2 we read these words. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David not turning aside to the right or to the left. Now that shows Josiah's heart was longing for the living Jehovah God to move, to bring the kingdom back to godliness. And Josiah had a holy heart. Josiah did not practice sin. Among all the attributes of God, we notice in the Bible that holiness is the most prominent and uh, this is what God desires for his people more than anything else. Holiness precedes power. Josiah practiced holiness. Church must practice holiness before she can practice the power of God to bring down the strongholds of Satan and all unrighteousness. And the number two quality of Josiah's heart is Josiah's heart is his heart was tender. 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 19. And the 19 verse says, Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become accursed and laid waste and because you tore your robes and wept in my presence. 
I have heard you, declares the Lord. Here is a tender-hearted king. He was tender towards God. Now God's people must develop a tenderness in their spirit. Be tender towards God. And be sensitive towards God and His ways. And uh, be tender towards God's people and be understanding about God's people's needs. And at this particular time a period in the lives of the, king of, uh, the kingdom of uh, Judah was a great revival that would bring back the people and the kingdom into God's ways. And the third thing about Josiah's heart was, he was repentant. Second Kings chapter 22 again verse 11. We read here, When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. And my friends, it is not good enough to offer a casual, ordinary prayer. Josiah's heart was repentant. Tearing clothes symbolize grief, external evidence of an inner repentance. Tearing clothes and putting on ashes and dust on the head, all external evidence of a deep repentant heart inside the man. You know, great music with the great choir, with the gowns and solid pastoral staff and dynamic speakers will not bring revival from heaven. But genuine repentance will bring God down to dwell in the heart of a broken spirit and also in the life of a man who has a repentant heart. That's what God says. I live in a high and majestic place. In a, that lofty, holy place. Where no man can come and stand before. Then he said, I also live in the heart of a man who possess a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And what brings revival and the move of God among us these days? My friends, India and the church in India must experience this move of God that brings about a great revival that is going to change not only as, as individuals, but not only the Christian church, but also bring the nation of India to God Almighty, who is ever to be worshipped. Genuine repent repentance, strong Bible studies, listen to God's voice through His Word. The Word builds up faith and enables us to believe God for the impossible and enables us to reach for the highest for God and attempt great things for God. Hallelujah! Won't it be a great day when the entire nation of India kneeling before Jehovah God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the Savior and Redeemer and declare with one voice, 
Jesus Christ is Lord and God of India. That's what the mighty revival can do. But for that to happen, oh, let God's people humble themselves and seek the face of God in humility. Turn away from their wicked ways. And God's promise is, then I will hear from heaven and heal your land. Oh, I don't have to tell you very specially that India, our beloved land, needs a great healing touch from God. India is sick. The sin sickness has no remedy except when God arise and when God moves in a mighty revival, people's heart will be broken and they will call out to God. And as the Bible says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall then be saved. And my friends, Attempt great things for God when that move happens. God will use ordinary people. And the fourth thing we notice about his heart is, Josiah had a committed heart. Second Kings chapter 23 verse 25. And verse 25 says, Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength in accordance with all the law of Moses. Here is a man who possessed a committed heart. He was committed to bring the nation back to Jehovah God. He was committed to get rid of uh, and destroy all the foreign gods. He was committed to lead the nation to repentance. He was committed to bring the people back to no gods. God, God's forgotten laws and the covenant and renew the covenant. He was committed to doing this. God was forgotten. His covenant with his people Israel was forgotten. The God of Israel and Judah was forgotten. And Josiah possessed such a heart that he was so committed, he would do anything and everything to bring people back to their God. He was committed to cleansing the nations and the temple and restore the temple worship according to God's laws given through Moses. And establishing the worship of one and a true living God, Jehovah God. He was committed to bring the nation back to repentance, back to the scriptures, and back to holiness, and back to obedience to God. That was the heart of Josiah. Committed to bring the nation under God. One nation under God. That's what happened when the first key is used. A man with a right heart. And what does that mean? That means a man whose heart is right. It is a holy heart. It is a heart which is 
tender towards God and his people. And he had a heart that was repentant. And then a heart that was completely committed to bring the nation back to God. The word of God was ignored and forgotten. The law of Moses was forgotten. And the sacrifices and the living worship of a living God was forgotten. As they ran after foreign gods, indulging themselves with all the fleshly uh, the pleasures of this life. Forgotten completely was God and his ways. And the second key to be used A revelation of the word. The word of God must be central. Nothing else. No man's ideas or opinions or interpretation. Not man's philosophy or science or any religious philosophy. God's unchanging eternal word must come back to the central place of the life of God's people. And secondly, the word of God brings direction. 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 13 to 20. Please read this after this. The word of God brings direction. The Holy Spirit anoint the word and applies it to our hearts. You need the Holy Spirit in order to make the word of God come alive. And it is the Holy Spirit who applies God's word into our hearts. Bringing about the needed changes in our heart. Our attitude and behavior and desires. My friends, are you willing to pay the price for God to move in a very special move which we call a revival. Our church in India as a whole needs such a revival. And we don't need to look outside of ourselves or our nation for a revival is to come from some other countries. No. No one can bring revival with them. It depends on our readiness and preparedness for God's move. We don't even need any special speakers. Humble servants of God getting together reading God's word and repenting over our disobedience and neglecting the most important things in life. Oh, let me pray. The Lord, you have given us this word this morning. We want to be obedient. And we know that we have to pay a price in order to experience special moves of God, which we call revival. Let it happen. May we be willing to give. But we want to see India saved. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we believe that it is going to happen for your own glory and honor. In Jesus' name, Amen. My friends, this is a great day. And this is a wonderful day. And have a good day ahead of you. And you spend this day profitably and walk by faith, being obedient to God. Amen.